in Titus chapter 2, the Bible says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ has appeared to all men, bringing unto us salvation. Grace and Truth Table is the Bible teaching radio ministry of Reverend Wisdom Dafiamapo of Grace Chapel International. Grace and Truth Table is committed to excellence in communicating biblical truth and its application. And now, Reverend Wisdom Dafiamapo. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 11. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16. Shall we all read it together? Ready, go. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived. And serve other gods and worship them. It says, take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves so that your heart, the center of your being, does not get deceived and you turn away from God. Now, I know all of us here, we don't want to turn away from God. You recognize God is your maker. You want to serve him. You want to live for him. But a time can come where even your heart is deceived. The heart can be deceived to turn away from God. And when people are turning away from God, they don't realize it all. When they are in the process of turning away from God, they don't realize it. Because turning away from God, it happens slowly, 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 slowly. By the time you want to realize, you become so insensitive to the things of God that you are far away from Him. That is why the Bible said the heart can be deceived. It can be deceived. For some of us, the way it starts is by giving excuses. By giving excuses. By giving excuses. The more you can give an excuse and rationalize certain compromises in your life, the more your heart is being deceived to turn away. And when compromising, there will be situations you will meet in your life and meet in my life and we are tempted to compromise. We know what God says, but we say but we kind of give an excuse. We rationalize. We want to go along with this for a while. Now, the more you do that, when you are not very uncompromising with evil, you tolerate evil to a certain degree, a certain extent. The more you do that, the more you become insensitive to the things of God and eventually either your heart gets deceived or your hearts become seared. Seared that you can't feel what God is saying. By that time, you have a way. You can hear the word of God, but you can still go and disobey and nothing pricks you in the heart. It's because it started some time ago when your heart was being deceived so slowly. Tonight, one of the prayers we will pray is that, Lord, if there is any deception around me, if I'm going through a period of deception, Lord, waken me up or wake me up. You know, the Bible said Eve was deceived. When the serpent came to him, her, the serpent didn't start all of a sudden, take this and eat it. She, uh, the serpent led her into discussion and the more the discussion went on, the more Eve forgot what to say. Some of you listening to me tonight, maybe deception, your heart is, uh, deception has been going on already. But thank God for the fasting session. So tonight we will pray that Lord, where I have been deceived, bring me back. Bring me back to the place where I can be very uncompromising with evil. I will not excuse evil or temptation around myself. I will drop any temptation to compromise with evil. I will drop it like a hot plate. 
You know, when you take a hot plate or you take a hot water and the thing is burning, you drop it. Sometimes, even when we were young, we could break plates because the thing is too hot. Don't be too old that the thing is hot, is deceiving you, you won't drop it. Drop it. Hallelujah. Don't compromise with evil. But uh, be very uncompromising with any evil, anything which is contrary to the word of God, which is coming to you. Let's concentrate on three areas tonight. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 verses 15 to verses 17. I believe some of you can find your prayer points tonight. Tonight we are going to pray on keeping ourselves pure or in purity. And it's difficult for me to mention specific things to you. But I want to read certain things to you from the word of God, trusting that the Holy Spirit himself will be ministering to you, pointing to things in your life that you can go to the Father in prayer and ask him to help you in these areas. First John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. He says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. There are three broad categories of sin against God that we have read here. It says the last of the flesh and the last of what? The second one, the eyes. And the third one is what? The pride of life. These are three broad categories of sin that God does not want us, his people, to have in our lives. It makes us impure. It makes us unholy. If you have the lust of the flesh, if you have the lust of the eyes, and if you have pride, God considers it sin. So tonight that we want to talk about we being pure, you can examine yourself if any of these three are in you. The lust of the flesh simply is talking about your flesh desiring sensual sins. As lust is something which is a very strong desire. A strong desire for you to satisfy your flesh with things which already the word of God has said they are sinful. But your flesh is desirous of it. How many know what I'm talking about? Your flesh is desirous of it. The desire is in the flesh. Your human flesh. Again, when the Bible is talking about flesh, it's not just talking about the body which you can cut with blade and blood is coming out. But he's talking about, about, uh, about your physical life. The life that you live as a human being in this world is simply because there are so many things other people are doing. And when you see what they are doing, you too, you feel like doing some. Because you think you are a human being like them. Then the desire starts building up. And when it becomes strong, then somehow you drop the effect of the word of God just because you want to do also like the others. You are having lust to do something just because other people are doing it. And one of the commonest lust of the flesh today is the sexual immorality. I know 
you left on your own, you may not want to be involved in sexual immorality. I hope so. Can I hear an amen to that? No, no, no. What I mean is, can, can I hear an amen from those who agree with me? When I say, oh, you all agree. I hope so. If we are left alone on our own. Are you following me? Where the lust comes in is that where other people are doing it, and somehow we hear of it, we see it, and then the desire comes within us also to do it. But tonight I want to tell you that but you are of a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You are called to show forth his praise. And so you are not to be like the others. If the others are involved in sexual immorality and they get away with it, they think they get away with it, that does not mean that you too, you can once a while go do some and come back. Are you hearing me? The lost comes in when you see other people doing it, when you see the adverse, when it triggers the desire in you. And then the desire becomes strong and strong and strong and is competing with the word of God in you. The Bible calls it the lust of the flesh. A strong desire to booze, to drink some, small. They call it social drinking. Not too much, but just a little. But the question is, how much is too much? When you drink a little, it satisfies the, the flesh. It's, uh, it could be uh, refreshing to you. <laughs> are you hearing me? But you are satisfying what? The flesh. You are not satisfying the spirit. And once you are satisfying the flesh, you are compromising. And what the Bible says is that your heart is being deceived. Because after some time, the deception will be so much that you can't come back. By the time you realize you are far gone. And you will conclude that you are gone out already. And then you can't come back. Talking about the sexual immorality in churches today, among young men, young women, even among married people, even among all kinds of people which affect our relationship with God and which God says, if you are still involved in those things, then before my overflow will come into your life, repent of these things and turn away from them, come to me. Talking about the sexual immorality, go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And let's see some strong admonition. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 1. Again, I'm trusting that as I read, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Because you yourself, you know where your heart is. You know what's going on within your life. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. From verse 3. Go to verse 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. That is, each one of you should know how to possess your own body. Each one of you should know how to carry yourself along I'm in the society, among boys and girls, among people of each, your age group, when you particularly you are not married, and when even you are married, you should know how to possess, how to carry your own vessel in sanctification and honor. Sanctification means that you are set apart for God. Your life is set apart for God. 
You are not like the other people. The others can do it, but you will not do it. Why? Because you have set yourself apart for who? For God to use you. So you carry your vessel, your vessel, your body. You carry it with honor and in sanctification. That is why in Joel chapter 2, he says, sanctify the assembly. Sanctify the assembly. Set them apart for the use of God. They are not to be like the other people. What the other people do is because they are not of the chosen generation. Verse 5, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Those who do not know God, what the body calls for, they do. All right? Because they don't know God. They don't know God's word. They don't know that sexual immorality. What do I mean sexual immorality? Sex outside marriage. They don't know that that is illicit before God. It's illegal before God. It has a lot of replications. It has a lot of results on people. That in, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Okay, verse 6. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. So that simply means if I'm moving with this sister, I'm going to marry this sister. Don't come and cross me. If you prayed and you think you should change, yeah, you are free to change. But don't come and cross me. <laughs> Praise God. He said, don't defraud your brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. Verse 7, for God, this is what I want you to take note of, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but he has called us to what? Holiness. He's called us to a life of holiness. I'll be very happy preaching to you, blessing, 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 blessing. But he has also called you to what? A life of holiness. And in a thousand and one cases, the blessing is intertwined with the life of holiness. That is why when we're talking about blessing overflow, we must take time tonight and talk about the holiness. He has called us to a life of holiness. Verse 8, let's see what verse 8 says. Oh, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but rejects God who has given us his Holy Spirit. If you reject the message, the message of holding your body in sanctification, set apart from God. I'm a Christian girl. Yeah, I want to marry you, but I will not mess up with my body until our marriage is blessed. Are you hearing me? If you reject this message, if you just think that, oh, we are moving together already, we are going to get married, therefore we should, we should be testing it. Whom are you rejecting? You are rejecting God. There's no business like testing. If you test with this one, you say you don't like it, you take, you take another one, then you test again. Uh, and if you don't like this one, what do you do? You take another one and test again. Uh, uh, the Bible will call you what? A prostitute. Ah, uh -huh, Lord. So tonight, our cry should be, Lord, make me holy. Lord, make me to be sanctified. Lord, let me not be deceived in my heart. Lord, help me to carry my vessel in sanctification and in honor. Hallelujah. The second lust he talked about is the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes what you see, the material things you see and you desire with your eyes. That one, it borders on covetousness because sometimes people get to this when they see what others have and they begin to envy. If you are working hard to get what you need, that is fine. I don't think the word of God has a problem with it. Even if you say it's Mercedes Benz you need, that is fine. God will not be angry with that. 
But when you see me having this, and because you see me having it, you say, I must also have it, then it is bordering on something else. It's bordering on covetousness. It's bordering on envy. And there are some people that think they can't get, but they are covetous for it. So that one, it becomes the last of the what? The eyes. What you see. And you see, when Satan went to the Garden of Eden to tempt Eve, these three, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, they were all, the temptation centered around these three. And Satan is still tempting people. There are times temptations will come to you on the basis of what you see. So what you see, which you find attractive. You remember Eve, he said, when Eve saw that the fruit was good and delicious, what she saw. There are some sins. People fall into it because of the lust of the eye. So you yourself, you know where you are. You know who you are. You know the things which you see which can drive you to the extent that when you are even getting away from God, it does not disturb you. It's just because what you see, you want. So you can go away from God. You say, let God wait. Let me get this, then I come. You yourself, you know yourself. I can't tell you, I also know myself. So between me and God, and between you and God, we are going to pray tonight that the lust of the eyes should not overtake your life. That you should not be like Eve. You see, and go that way and be tempted. The third one is what? The pride of life. Pride, pride, pride. It's because of pride that people quarrel over. Pride, you've done this to me. Who do you think you are? And then the quarrels start. The Bible speaks against strife. Strife is a sin. Quarreling with people, unforgiveness, bitterness, all these things, they are things of the heart. They contaminate the heart. You can come and praise God and dance. Uh, and then even after church, quarrel with people. And sometimes you quarrel because of pride. Ah, ah, why? How can you do this to me? Who are you? Forgive. Are you hearing me? You forgive. They've done this to you and so what? Forgive the person. Can it be simple and forgive? Hmm? The Bible talks about the, the rich young ruler. And I say they are, they are poor young rulers as well. There are some, some people, they are nobody, but they have pride. You can't mistakenly step on their toes. Ah, when they rise up on the inside. And some people even come to church with the pride of. They are seeking God, but you have to know how you talk to them. They want, they want God to bless them, but let the pastor make a mistake. They can magnify the mistakes and you won't forgive when I make a mistake. It's simply because of pride. That's why the Bible says humble. It says God does what? He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So tonight, one of the things you have to ask for in prayer is God to give you humility. Now, when the Bible talks about pride to one of the people God regards as proud people is those who refuse to obey the word of God. When you know what God says and yet you cannot do it, God calls that what? Proud or pride. And there's a lot of instructions on pride. Let me just read two for you and then we pray. Okay? First, first Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse 6, 
Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and that he may exalt you in due course of time. Praise God. Then James chapter 4, start from verse 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Verse 9, lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will. There are a number of you here tonight. The sin you are struggling with is simply because of pride in your heart. And if you find a way of humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God tonight, the sin will be dealt with. Every sin is sin and we must ask God for forgiveness, for cleansing by his blood. And after cleansing by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you ask for a pure heart, a clean heart, the center of your being. You leave this meeting tonight purified in your heart, sanctified, a humble person, living in all humility, not carrying strife, not carrying bitterness, not carrying anger against anyone. You leave this place carrying, knowing that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You will have your body consecrated unto God. You will not fornicate. You will not commit adultery. You will not allow smooching to take place because smooching will increase your hormones to a level where you can't control what the boy wants to do next. You will not be involved in illicit acts of sex. You will keep yourself pure and holding on to God. God bless you as you do so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Type of lust. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride in the heart. Ask God to help you to deal with it. Ask God to help you to have your flesh crucified, to have your eyes to be fixed upon only Him tonight. Tonight. Thank you for listening to the Grace and Truth Table with Reverend Wisdom Dafiamapo of Grace Chapel International. We believe you've been blessed even as you've listened. For copies of this tape, contact Grace Chapel International at Kanishi First Light, Opposite Accra Academy, or call us on 0243 716 804. And remember to always walk in His amazing grace.